Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Friday, February 11th, 2022. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach. I am joined by my NBA partner here, Mr. Josh Crash Davis. And we have a very special guest today, and we really appreciate him joining us, joining us here on this busy weekend here as the Super Bowl is about to come uh, come up. But uh, he is joining us today to represent, as his hat says, prize picks. And it is Mr. Jack Cooper. And Jack, what I want to know is uh, I think all of our members should be going, Cooper. <laughs> We're used to that here in Dallas with Armani. So now, you know, you've got the perfect uh, name to call out. But thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. Yeah, yeah. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Yeah, and I'll tell you, we we are so excited. I know, you know, Josh has been a massive prize picks guy for a while. I've been really jumping on board even more so lately. <clears throat> Our members have asked for prize picks, and we we've seen you guys grow. So congratulations, first of all, on you know, the, how, what prize picks has been able to do over this last year. It's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's been a lot of fun on our team. We've got a fun team. It's it's been fun, fun to, to really grow the business this past year. That's fantastic. Can you can you tell uh, our listeners and some of our members just give us a real quick synopsis of Prize Picks? And and again, we have all the information. We'll be uh, posting it everywhere on our website, on Twitter, all of the info, uh, uh, user's guide, all of the steps. But just wanted to hear it a little bit from you, Jack, to give them an idea if they haven't played prize picks yet. Yeah, so prize picks is a simpler way to play DFS uh, with, with DraftKings and FanDuel. You got the salary cap and all that. Ours is just a uh, player props against the house. So you pick two to five players. You pick over under the projection. We have every sport, every stat you can imagine. I mean, so NBA is going on right now. Super Bowl is this weekend, but we go as deep as CSGO, disc golf. I, I know we got women's college basketball has been – on our board as of late, and, and we re- really take a lot of pride of putting as many uh, player selections up as possible on our board. So are you saying I can play disc golf? That, that, that that's correct. Saying? That's correct. <laughs> if, you want, if you want to place it, an entry on Brody Smith and Eagle McMahon, you can do that on prize picks. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I see those things on TikTok where they fire, fire, and it goes through the trees, bounces, and then into the thing. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I could yeah. I could play that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. But uh, but fantastic, man. You know, all of our sports. Obviously, we uh, Jack, uh, we do basketball, football, baseball, and golf here. So yeah. I know just from looking at the prize picks and playing it some myself, just fantastic array of choices and a lot mm-hmm. of fun to play. And I like the options. You guys again have done a terrific job. So we are so happy here at Coach Talk to be partnering with you and um, do you want to tell them what this fantastic offer is for new prize pick uh, customers that are coming to you through coach talk what they're going to be able to uh, get as a bonus yeah yeah so all, all users uh, that, that use code coach talk uh, whether you use through, through the link or, or just signing up with the code you're going to get a hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred dollars with your first time deposit and, and that, that will automatically come into your, your account as promo funds. You, you have no drip to earn that or anything like that. It will just automatically show up and be in your account right when you make that first deposit. Absolutely. And so it's the promo code. You can see it scrolling on the bottom. The promo code, just Coach Talk. It could be all caps. It could be small letters, whatever. It's not case sensitive. As long as you put Coach Talk in there, again, if you deposit 100, you get a free 100. And what I love about what you guys did, and it's so frustrating on other sites and places where they release like $2 after you bet 50 or $1. I mean, it just pops right in there, the 100 in the promo dollars. And it doesn't mean anything, but it's real $100 that you get to play. So uh, it's a wonderful way to do it if you're new to, to prize picks for sure. And then from a content standpoint, we're going to really ratchet it up here at Coach Talk. We're going to have uh, prize picks picks of the day uh, on some of our podcasts every Friday is prize picks day that Josh and I will be doing the podcast together so we'll finish out with some of those selections 
And then we'll also have a daily selection in our Discord for our members. Uh, both Josh and I will be providing that for the NBA. And we'll be doing it for other sports as well. MLB uh, is where I uh, really did well with prize picks last year. So mm -hmm. I'm excited uh, to do that again. So all kinds of things happening there. We, you know, I really appreciate again, uh, Jack, that you came on here. Crash, did you have any questions or, or uh, comments for Jack? I know you're, you are Mr. Prize Picks in my book. So, <laughs> um, no, I, I think that, you know, we covered quite a bit yesterday and, and uh, just looking forward to this partnership. And hopefully we get a lot of new members, you know, starting this weekend with the Super Bowl. It's a really good opportunity. So, absolutely. Well, we'll be splashing that everywhere on all of our social media, on YouTube. We'll talk about it a little bit more on this podcast and we'll go from there. So, Thanks again, Jack, for jumping in. Really appreciate you taking the time here right before the Super Bowl. Sort of tells you what everything you need to know about prize picks because I don't think anybody else would have taken the time to jump on uh, right at the busiest time of, of the season. So appreciate you. Uh, I, I think we're completely ready to, to blow this up together and let's just uh, grow prize picks and grow coach talk and uh, everybody wins. Yeah, yeah, no. Th thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to get this partnership started. I, I mean, I, I, I've seen Josh on social media and around our site for a while, so I'm, I'm excited to finally be partnering with you guys and, and working with y'all. And I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. Well, thank you so Same much. Here. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Do you want to give us a Super Bowl pick on your way out the door? Uh, no pressure. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a Georgia guy, so I, I, I'm sticking with Matt Stafford. I, I hate to go against Burrow, but, but I, I got to stick with Stafford, my, my, my Georgia guy here. All right. Rams. All right. Rams yeah. are the pick. There we go. Yeah. I'm jumping yeah. on prize picks right now and locking it in. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jack. All right. Have a good one, guys. Yeah, thanks, too. Jack. Thanks. Take care. All right. Let me see here if I can switch to make us look a little bit more uh, correct here. Um, uh, so I know your, what is your strategy just to, to uh, go a little bit more on what Jack was saying? What is your big thing with uh, prize picks? Um, what do I you mean, look I just, for? I look for consistency. You know, the guys that have been consistently going over their number. Um, with that last five um, feature that they've added recently, that really helps a lot because I don't have to spend anywhere near as much time looking back at box scores and statistics and stuff. A lot of the statistics are just right there now on their website or their app, depending on which one you're using. Excellent. And and it's very uh, I haven't used the, the, the phone app yet. Is that very simple as well? Yeah, that's primarily what I use. Um, okay. I usually just look at the website. Uh, as a backup, if they're having an issue with the app or something like that, I primarily just use their uh, app. Terrific. All right, man, we got to get into a busy seven game slate. And just to you know, set the stage a little bit, we are going to do this uh, Friday podcast. Usually I've been doing that solo. So now Crash is going to jump on with me every Friday. It is going to be the DFS Coach Talk podcast sponsored by Prize Picks. And then at the end of the Friday uh, podcast of going over the games, we'll give you some of our picks for the day uh, for prize picks. And then Saturdays, um, we are going to continue to do uh, the Saturday morning podcast together, Crash and I, for the NBA. And we, at the end of that one, will continue to do our Two Brains Are Better Than One FanDuel GPP build. And then Saturday afternoons uh, at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, um, Gundacker and I will continue to jump on a live stream and go back over all of the Saturday games, give you a, a feel for what our selections are shaping up to be. So we'll have uh, a lot of coverage for the weekends. Um, Sunday I'll be solo, but Friday and Saturday we've got all kinds of uh, opinions coming in and, and picks. So we appreciate that. We're excited. If, you if you're pumped up for the Super Bowl, Check out the podcast from Crash and Andrew and a, a special guest, John Wehausen, I saw was on there. How about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He had all those analytics. He, he, he was did. I, I heard uh, we're, our uh, emails getting flooded with uh, single women all wanting to John Wehausen's number. That's the, 
<laughs> That's the latest. But anyway, I, I kid him, man. I kid him. Um, but anyway, that's so it's it's going to be exciting weekend with Super Bowl, obviously. And then we've got all this going on. Great try, uh, time to try prize picks. All right, let's reset it. Seven games. We've got uh, three games at seven. We have two games at 730. We have an eight and a nine o'clock. So we've got it spread out. No 10 o'clock games, but still a nice spread. Still can do a little late swap. We do have... Uh, Seven teams either on the first or second night of a back-to-back. And mm-hmm. obviously, we won't uh, beat a dead horse here, but all the NBA trades that shook up the entire NBA world have taken place and very exciting. Uh, I was able to put up a podcast. If you want to, how that those trades that took place through uh, this week, and especially yesterday and the day before, how they're going to affect DFS going forward, you need to uh, check out the podcast we have up. It is basically a trade deadline uh, it, at right at the end of the deadline. I went over all the trades and not mm-hmm. just how they were going to affect the teams at all, but specifically how they'd affect us in DFS. Right. Whose rotations are going to be affected. And there's a lot of movement here. I mean, and jumping on that, you know, in these early games when the trades are still settling in, Huge advantage between now and the All-Star break next week because the prices aren't going to settle in yet. So Mm -hmm. that's what I'm very excited about. So big edge from today till the All-Star break. Uh, Maybe after the All-Star break, they'll start catching on and and adjust the pricing. But uh, I'm excited to attack this this next week. How about you, Josh? Yeah, I am. It's it's a little bit of a learning process because you just got to see how these guys are going to fit in with their new teams. Um, so there's a little bit of a learning curve there, but I think that we'll have an edge because, you know, those optimizers aren't going to be looking at those kind of things. Right. And they, they don't have a, a basis to go off of. So, mm-hmm. you know, using all of the analytics and all of the you know projections and ownership, are all very important, as we always tell everybody, yeah. but being able to hand build from there, see where these, you know, these players, who are they going to fit? Have they played with guys before? Like, you know, I I had forgotten for a moment when I watched Levert and Jared Allen, I thought, oh my mm-hmm. gosh, that's right. They yeah. played together in Brooklyn. They already have a good chemistry. That's right. the kind of thing that you have to take to your advantage. And, you know, people aren't always thinking about that right away. Yeah. So, you mm-hmm. know, we're going to point those out as we go and uh, see how all of this transpires. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> we are going to jump on this seven-game slate, if I can get my voice back in front of me here. And uh, we're going to start off. <clears throat> Gee, oh, I, I have a frog in my throat here. Uh-oh. I know it. Um, all right, let's jump in. First game, Oklahoma City Thunder at the Philadelphia 76ers. We've got Philly minus 13, so little red flag there, big favorites. 209 is the total. Not good at all. Thunder, a paltry 98 implied. Philadelphia, 111 uh, implied for them. So nothing to write home about in that sense whatsoever. Um, oh, I have to open up this screen to go over my next piece. I will tell you this. Both teams are uh, on the first night of a back-to-back. So that definitely will affect things yeah. uh, here a little bit without question. Um, in this game, Cleveland 34. I'm sorry. What am I talking about? Oklahoma City 17 and 37. Philadelphia 32 and 22. Uh, injury designations. Akpala, the new Thunder man, is uh, questionable. SGA, Muscala, JRE, Roby, and Wiggins all out for the Thunder. Mm-hmm. So they're somewhat already in shutdown mode. What a yeah. crazy, crazy group there with Oklahoma City. For Philadelphia, are you ready for this one? Questionable. Maxi, the beard, James Harden, um, Millsap, and Milton. So they're listed as mm-hmm. questionable right now. These trades have to go through the league office yeah. and they have to get their physicals. So that will be the big news as we watch today. Crash is are you know are any of these players going to be available? Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll find that out as the day goes on. 
Yeah, I feel like it usually takes a couple of days for these guys to start playing with their teams. I mean, we're talking about one, not even 24 hours later, or, you know, a little over 24 hours later. So, yeah. And I've seen it uh, hat work that way. But generally, with all the trades that came down yesterday, for now, those people that were traded, I'm not counting them in until tomorrow. But mm -hmm. again, that's not official. We have to see that, you know, as, as the time goes on here. So a couple of things here uh, as well. We've got um, Oklahoma City 15th in pace, Philadelphia 26th. So some of that leads to that small number. Both mm -hmm. teams solid defensively. The Thunder scrappy at 13th and Philadelphia at 11th. So I get it. You know, you got blowout potential, low line, yeah. uh, not fast teams, good de defensive teams. What are you doing with this game, or is this going to be a pretty fast pass for you? Um, I mean, it, it's hard for me to imagine this game staying very close. So with that being said, I feel like I'm, I'm probably not going to be getting to too many guys in this game. Um, I think Darius Baisley has been playing pretty well, so he's a you know, consideration for me. 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DraftKings. Philadelphia's allowed 11th most fantasy points to power forward. So I do like Baisley a little bit here. And then um, on the Philadelphia side, Mat Matisse Thibel uh, at 3300 I think that's a good price for him. Um, he should see some more minutes now after this trade, I think. So uh, Oklahoma City's allowed the third most fantasy points to small forwards. So I do like Thibel a little bit, especially on DraftKings at 3300 Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, first of all, obviously, we have to get confirmation that these guys won't be in. Again, I'm, I don't believe any of these guys play today, but that's just my opinion. So in looking at this, you know, obviously Philly's going to be a bit distracted looking ahead, maybe counting on this game, you know, as an yeah. easy one. And, and Oklahoma City's scrappy. So I know mm -hmm. it's a 209. Everybody's going to say, oh, pass this game. I don't think it's a dead pass, though, Josh. There's a few guys I have some interest in. I mean, Basie, like you mentioned, has been playing well. Favors is back, yeah. so it may take a little way there. But Dort at 6'3 has been pretty tough, and Giddy at 7'5 is a little high priced, but he's running the show completely. So I do have a, a bit of interest there. I'd only go with one Thunder player at the mm -hmm. most. But on the Philly side, you know, obviously all the new guys are coming in. It'd right. be interesting to see. With the four stars, you know, with Maxi, Harden, Harris, and Embiid, who's that fifth starter going to be? You know, it, it's probably either going to be Cork Moss, Thibel, or Green. So, mm -hmm. sort of interested to see how those guys are in the mix today uh, in Cork Moss, Thibel, and Green, how much action they're going to get. I think you could go with a, a 3 8 Cork Moss or even a 3 3 Thibel because. You know, they're, I'm sure they're thinking that too now. The rotation yeah. is going to be a lot different with uh, Harden coming in and shots are going to be tougher to come by. Mm -hmm. And these guys are jockeying for position, uh, you know, to, to get those minutes. So a uh, little interested there. Um, Embiid at 11-9, though, it, he may crush, but I just don't know with this being a first night of a back-to-back, -back, I'm not going to go there just because I think if they can rest them, they will really quickly. Mm -hmm. And Tobias Harris is up to 8-3, which makes, which makes it a little bit tough too. So, you know, I may go one off Oklahoma City and a value guy for Philly. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking too. And yeah, and beat, I don't think he's going to get – I just don't think he's going to get enough minutes. I don't think this game's going to stay close enough long enough for him to get – the full minutes we would need for him to hit value at almost 12,000 on DraftKings. Exactly. You need full game at that price. You really do. Yeah. And you said it's his first night of a back to back too. So they might be pulling him early. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that as well, but you know, he also, if it stays close, could break the slate, but you know, yeah. you can't, you can't play all the big price guys. That's for sure. Right. All right. Game two, seven o'clock game as well. Charlotte Hornets, Detroit Pistons. Charlotte favored by seven and a half. Decent, healthy 227 total, 117.25 for the Hornets, 109.75 uh, for the Detroit Pistons. Um, coming into this game, uh, Charlotte is 28 and 28, Detroit 12 and 43. 
For Charlotte, we have Book Night Probable. Uh, Montrez Harrell is one of the guys that came over in that trade. Uh, he's questionable because we don't know if he's going to be ready yet. Again, we're counting them out for now. Hayward, Martin, and McDaniels are all out for Charlotte. Mm -hmm. For Detroit, Kate Cunningham for the 10th game in a row is listed as questionable. He was scratched yesterday. We'll see uh, if he plays today. It is the second night of a back-to-back -back for, uh, for Detroit. Yeah. So maybe Cade sat yesterday to play today. And if so, and he's playing without restrictions, he could be a really nice play. Um, other than that, their new guys, their new guy coming in Bagley, uh, probably will not qualify just yet. Two other guys, questionable livers and picket, not that they're in the rotation or anything. Mm -hmm. As far as, you know, Charlotte, it is an Island game for them. As I mentioned, second night of a back to back, uh, for Detroit, Charlotte is the fastest paced team in the league. So we always love to attack that as much as possible. Um, as far as Detroit, they're 13th in pace. So we've got some up and down basketball here, no doubt about it. And mm -hmm. two really lousy defensive teams, 24th and 25th. So there's a lot to like about this game. Uh, Charlotte, not a huge favorite. It's at right. Detroit. You got poor D, good pace. Uh, are you jumping on this game? A little bit. Um, LaMelo Ball is my first, you know, the first guy that stands out to me in this game. He has uh, had 45 DraftKings points against Detroit on January 5th. He had 12 points, 8 rebounds, and 12 assists. Detroit's allowed the fifth most fantasy points to point guards. One concern for me is that the Hornets blew them out in that game. It was 140 to 111. Um, so they won by almost 30 points. Now, yeah. Jeremy Grant wasn't playing then so that should help Detroit keep it closer I would think and especially if Kate Cunningham plays that will help too obviously um so so ball would be one of my top plays in this game um Jeremy Grant as I mentioned is back so I, I do like him here the Hornets have allowed the fifth most fantasy points to power forwards he had um 35 and a half DraftKings points last night against Memphis and that was his best game he's had since December 8th when he had 44.3 against the Wizards. So at 5,200 on FanDuel and 6,000 on DraftKings, that's a pretty solid price uh, for a guy like Jeremy Grant who can get us, you know, 40 to 50 DraftKings points um, potentially. And then uh, if if Cade Cunningham sits, I do like Hamadou Diallo a little bit here uh, at 4,600 on DraftKings. He had 38 DraftKings points last night against Memphis. So at 4,600, that would be a really nice return on the value there. And then Charlotte's allowed the third most fantasy points to shooting guards. So uh, it is a good matchup for Diallo. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, this this game is tempting. I mean, it, a lot of things add up here. And some of the prices are very fair. Um, there's a lot of guys, I think. If you want to pay up for Ball at 9K and Cunningham on the other side at 8K, you could have really explosive uh, results there. Those could be two really good plays. Mm -hmm. If Cunningham is going to play and he's going to be um, without limits. I yeah. do like your take on Diallo uh, at 4-6. If Cunningham's out, he definitely has shown, you know, getting after it. Um, <clears throat> was real pleased with him yesterday, rostered him yesterday, and uh, he really is uh, explosive out there. Mm -hmm. uh, decent prices, you know, Rogier 7-3 is very fair. Uh, Kelly Oubre, expect to start again at 5-9 you know, really gets the shots up. He's very yeah. active. Um, Miles Bridge is a little bit much for him at 8-1. Mm, yeah. uh, Plumlee's been steady at 5-4. People, I, you know, really look past him a lot lately, but he's showing multiple games of, of being uh, consistent. So he's in, in play for me, even mm -hmm. though that center spot is always tough. Uh, Grant at 6K, he was uh, crazy underpriced yesterday. Uh, five two on Fandle or, or yesterday couldn't pass up and he ended up doing great. Yeah, he's, he's still, still five two. Today. Go ahead. He's still five two on Fandle. There you go. So yeah. I mean, they didn't move his price. He had a big game. Charlotte's, you know, uh, gets up and down. I will say I do uh, like Miles Bridges' defense. I think it's a plus defense. So I'm not immediately going to go to Grant. I think he's going to mm -hmm. get a lot of people jumping right back on him at that. Miss price on both sites, especially yeah. on FanDuel. Uh, definitely in consideration for me, though, uh, but not a lock and load. 
So I'd like I'll have some exposure there. I'm it's not going to be a stack game for me, but I'll definitely have some exposure. Mm-hmm. All right, game three, this third seven o'clock game. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers at the Indiana Pacers. Cleveland minus seven and a half. It's only a two twelve and a half total. One ten for Cleveland. One o two point five for the Indiana Pacers, or what's left of the Indiana Pacers, I guess, is the mm. way to put it. Um, coming into this game, Cleveland is 34 and 21, definite coach of the year there. Indiana Pacers 19 and 37. Markinen is out for Cleveland. Uh, on for Indiana, we have Brogdon uh, listed as questionable for the millionth game in a row. Jackson and uh, J- Josh Jackson, or I'm sorry, Isaiah Jackson is questionable, and that's important news. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't believe Jalen Smith will probably be ready yet, but possibly we'll see. He came over for Phoenix from Phoenix, and then the guys that are out are uh, McConnell, Turner, and Warren. Right. Uh, so again, the Brogdon news ends up being the talk of the, you know, game. I mean, it's been like that multiple times. He hasn't played in forever. So for me anyway, Josh, I'm going to count them out for this at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would too. Until I see something that says he's in. Plus, if he's in, I mean, it does affect the rest of the guys on the floor, but uh, I'm sure he's going to have a a strict minutes restriction. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, It's the first night of a back-to-back for Cleveland. So that's an important note to to check out. Uh, Island game for Indiana. Cleveland is 23rd in pace, Indiana 20th, so that does not help. And then you have the stifling Cleveland defense that's ranked 4th. They should be able to take uh, advantage, though, of a porous Indiana defense that is only 26th. So does this stay close enough? Is this a key game for you? It could be a sneaky one. Yeah, it's going to be a sneaky game, I think, like you said. I I don't really know how much of – you know, this game I'm going to want to have ownership of, um, you know, Levert, there's going to be that narrative. A lot of people are going to look at, but 8,600. I mean, that's a pretty steep price to pay for a guy like Levert, especially when, like I mentioned, Lamella, Lamella ball is 8,400. Uh, I kind of like him a little bit more. Um, and then, you know, Duarte, I think Levert's going to take a little bit away from him. A lot of people have been relying on Duarte lately. He's been playing pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, Dwayne Washington, you could look at. He's 4,400. He's been, you know, hitting pretty decent four, four to five X consistently. Uh, my favorite play in this game, though, is going to be Kevin Love. Um, he had 40.8 last time they played against Indiana. He scored 40 plus in six of his last eight games. You know, with Sabonis in Sacramento now and Isaiah Jackson questionable, it's just not a lot that can match up with him from Indiana. So. I do like Kevin Love quite a bit in this game, and that's probably my favorite play and possibly my only play in this game. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be interesting. I, I'm expecting Cleveland to start Garland, Lavert, Mobley, and Allen for sure. Yeah, the he's third been... guys, I believe, is going to be Okoro because of his defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I think that that is a heck of a lineup, man. And now, that, and then if you look at their bench, so they have Love, of course, right? One of the six men of the year. And then they have Jetty and and uh, Wade, Rondo, Goodwin, mm-hmm. Stevens. They have a, a really nice bench. They are uh, they put together a team that can make a run in the playoffs. There's no doubt about it. My concern, though, is from a DFS standpoint, I'm just not super comfortable. Uh, rostering these guys. You've got Garland at 8-2, Levert at 8-6, Mobley at 6-7, and Allen at 7-9. Mm-hmm. So none of them are dirt cheap. I think you're going to see the usage spread around between yeah. these guys. You know, I don't feel confident saying any of these guys are going to smash. You know, until maybe we see as they develop some chemistry together, this will be the first mm-hmm. game they start together. They True. brought Levert off the bench the first game. Right. So we need to see, you know, who the alphas are going to be here. How's that going to work? And uh, it, you know, the dynamic has definitely changed. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you know, Garland was an easy guard play before because it was he was the only guard you could right. score uh, on on the team. But now it's it's totally different. So I'm going to be fading Cleveland for a little bit here, unless they're in 
just an undeniable matchup. And mm-hmm. if somebody sits or anything like that, but with everybody back, everybody playing full minutes, uh, it's a pass for me. So, I do think there are some decent plays, though, on the Indiana side. You know, if again, we need the Brogdon news, but we have to see, you know, if he remains out, you know, what what's Halliburton's role going to be right off the mm-hmm. bat? Is he going to be the go to guy? I think he is uh, yeah. personally, uh, Josh, because, you know, who are they going to surround him with? They're going to surround him with Duarte, Brissett, uh, Bataze, uh, Washington, you know, and then Buddy Heald, what role is he going to play? I think he Mm -hmm. comes off the bench initially, but, you know, a lot of unknowns here. But I will say I like Halliburton today. I know it seems like a strange uh, play at 8-4. How's he going to fit in? How much is he going to play? I just think that that's going to scare some people. Yeah. And I think he's going to have to really carry the load for this team because they're just terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I think I said something about Levert and Duarte, but I meant Halliburton. So oh, okay. Halliburton okay. would be taken away from Duarte. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I just, we'll see, you know, I think it might be somewhat contrarian, but as of right now, Halliburton's on my list. And then if you want to go value, you know, let's see if Isaiah Jackson's out, it does make Batazzi and Brissett, mm-hmm. uh, you know, needing to play pretty big minutes. They do right. have Terry Taylor there. They're, they're such a, a dumpster fire at this point, though. I mean, you can you can play some of these guys, you know, and their their prices are right. But even as last man in, they can sink it, man. If you mm-hmm. grab one of these guys and they throw, you know, 10, 12 fantasy points up, you're, right. you're screwed. So I don't know how much I'm going to risk uh, with those value guys. Yeah, I don't blame you at all. Yep. All right. Game four, San Antonio Spurs, Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta's favored by eight. It's a 233 and a half total. So you have the second highest total on the board. Very aggressive 233 number here. Uh, San Antonio is 112.75. Atlanta, 120.75. Very seldom see a 120 plus implied nowadays but Mm -hmm. uh they've got one right here and it's it's a big number uh spurs come in 20 and 35 atlanta 26 and 28 we've got only lou williams questionable for atlanta so they're healthy and ready to make a run san antonio questionable on trey jones then their two new guys langford and richardson that may take a little time to get them in there um Sadoransky out, Dragic out for uh, their the other guys that uh, were coming through trade wise. All right, so you know we look at this game in a lot of different ways. Two teams, you know, uh, not uh, doing what people expected them to do, especially right. Atlanta. Uh, but both teams are on an island game. San Antonio plays fast at fifth. Atlanta's moved up; they're nineteenth. They were playing slower. Defensively, nothing to write home about. That's why you got mm-hmm. that big total of 233 and a half. Yeah. They're 18th and 27th. Can you believe Atlanta's 27th wow. defensively? That's the team that was in the Eastern Conference Finals last year. That oh, yeah. Pathetic. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? What's this game looking like for you? Uh, the first play that I'm looking at is De- uh, DeJounte Murray. He's 10-6 on FanDuel, 10-3 on DraftKings. They played each other on November 24th. He had 54 and a half uh, DraftKings points that game. The Hawks have allowed the 10th most fantasy points to point guards. Um, Cleveland held, you know, DeJounte Murray below 40 on Wednesday night. But before that, he had scored 50 plus in four straight games, 50 plus DraftKings points. Um, And he's averaging 56.75 DraftKings points this year in this games without Derek White. And obviously Derek White was traded to Boston. So I do think that this is going to give DeJounte Murray more opportunities uh, for DFS, for sure. I agree. How, how about on the Atlanta side? Um, I like Trey Young. Uh, he's 9,000 on FanDuel, 9,900 on DraftKings. In that November 24th game, he had 61.75 DraftKings points, so he put up really nice numbers. Uh, the Spurs have allowed the seventh most fantasy points to point guards, and he has scored 50-plus in four of his last five games. So – He's definitely one of the top payup options for me on this slate. 
Uh, Clint Capella is in a pretty nice spot. He's 5,300. He had 46 um, DraftKings points last time they played on that November 24th game. And the Spurs have allowed the six most fantasy points to center. So it's another top 10 matchup here for Capella. So I do like Capella and Trey Young. Um, that's about it for me in this in this game. But those those three plays I really do like, and I might have all three of them in my lineup. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, I hate to see Pop go out like this. This Spurs team is a disaster. Uh, and they're obviously rebuilding for the future, I guess. I'm not mm-hmm. sure what they're accomplishing. Um, you know, I really like DeJounte Murray, but here's my concern. And, you know, what is the psyche right now of this San Antonio team? I mean, they obviously have given up. They're not going to make the playoffs. Yeah. They trade away their second best guard in, in white. You know, you just wonder, can they put professionalism ahead of everything else, come out, play their game and go? Or is it going to be, you know, a bit of a, a stunning, sulky type of, you know, where are we going from here? Because I, I was personally shocked they traded White. I thought mm-hmm. they were going to build around Murray and White in the backcourt together. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I'm hoping DeJounte can put – that aside, because he's such a fantastic player. Right. Uh, I know he's extremely expensive, but as of right now, he's one. He's possibly my favorite payup mm. of, of the entire slate, which yeah. sounds insane, but it's just such a high game uh, scoring game. Uh, Atlanta has trouble putting teams away. Yeah. Their backcourt defense isn't anything to write home about, and again, the usage from White. You know, I think some of that just piles on to Murray's already high usage numbers. Mm -hmm. So I may be, you know, really giving it a shot uh, with DeJounte Murray here. I think just, just a perfect game. And if they stay in it at all, it's going to be because he's having a monster game. Yeah. Um, I will mention one guy that I'm starting to show some interest in that's Zach Collins. He's Hmm. three, five. He finally came back. He's on a minutes restriction. So maybe not this game, but, Start following Zach Collins. He's a pop kind of player. I think he can, I mean, if you remember him, he's been out like two years. But when he was with Portland, he was a double-double guy for sure. I mean, he's long. He's talented. So uh, not sure I'll roll with him just yet, but just wanted to mention, uh, because we haven't heard from Zach Collins in a long time. But I did watch him his first game back, and he looked good. He looked pretty much like the old you know, Zach Collins. So something to keep uh, an eye on there. Not interested in anybody else on the Spurs side. I can see your point on Trey Young. I mean, it is a fantastic spot for him. Uh, He's uh, a 9-9 price on DraftKings, only 9 on Fandle. So very tempting to come back Mm -hmm. with with Young uh, if you're going to play Murray. I think a lot of people are going to look to do that. Right. I, the jury's still out for me. And the only reason that's the case is because uh, Atlanta's just so healthy right now. So mm-hmm. there were times where Young was getting more usage because either Herter or Hunter or Bogdanovich, the, all these guys have been out for big stretches this year, Gallo included. Right. Now that you've got all those miles to feed and even their depth inside with Collins, Capella, and Okongwu, you know, they've really got. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, shots to spread around. Mm -hmm. Trey's still going to be delivering a lot of those and his assist ratio should go up. But, you know, the peripheries, if he doesn't have monster scoring, uh, it makes it a little bit tough because he's never going to be a giant rebound guy either. So uh, just a little hesitant there, but I certainly could see that. I would say, you know, DeAndre Hunter at four or five is a little bit tempting Mm -hmm. And uh, again, though, you know, the depth of Atlanta scares me uh, with playing everybody and and really spreading it, uh, spreading it out amongst them all, all of them. Yeah, that's what that's what kind of held me up too with with Atlanta was just how many guys they have that can score and stuff. So I just I just kind of went with Young and Capella. Yeah, I I do not blame you. I do not. Uh, We have three games left real quickly. If you want to join us, check us out. Today's the day, man. If you if you don't do the three doll uh, three day for ten bucks, yeah. then I don't know what to tell you. You'd get you get all of our golf PGA action through the weekend, all of our NBA action through the weekend, 
and then of course the Super Bowl. Right. So you know the the podcast is up now, but all of the picks, everybody's involved. All of our NFL guys, they'll be in Discord throughout the weekend, uh, crunching numbers and discussing things. So give us a shot. Enjoy it with us this weekend. We have the best community in the industry. Uh, DFSCoachTalk.com. Uh, jump in and give us a try. Yeah, also, I'll have multiple. Sorry, I was going to say I'll have multiple prize picks plays on Sunday for the Super Bowl. So excellent. And that was my next point. You know, if you missed the beginning of the pod, uh, we partnered with Prize Picks. Uh, Friday is our Prize Picks. Uh, podcast that's what this is today and we're going to give those selections mm -hmm. at the end of each day and if you sign up for prize picks uh for your first deposit they give you a free hundred bucks if you put in a hundred bucks it's all the way up to if you only want to put in 25 they give you 25 yeah. and you can use it right away so the main thing is you have to use the promo code coach talk all one word no spaces just coach talk and you will get that uh free match up to a hundred bucks for first time depositors. All right, three games left, 7.30. Another 7.30 game, there is two of them. The Denver Nuggets, Boston Celtics, Boston minus five and a half. It's a 217 and a half total. 106 for Denver, 111 and a half for Boston. Uh, interesting game here. This one should uh, should be a rough and tumble game. Denver's 30 and 24, Boston similar at 31 and 25. Um, we've got probable, and then the guys out for Denver are Kanchar, Morris, and Murray. For Boston, uh, they traded for Daniel Tice to come back to where he played before. I'm not sure he or Derek White. I don't expect them to be available yet for this game, but we will keep abreast of that situation. Um, all right, as, as far as pace goes, a little bit of an issue here. Denver 22, Boston 21. Uh, that affects that total. Plus, defensively, man, these two teams can defend. There's no question about that. We've got Denver 19th and improving. Boston second now. So their defense has just been phenomenal uh, the last month or so. Um, interesting game. Very, uh, very possible, you know, spots where some guys could excel. It mm -hmm. is the first night of a back-to-back -back for Denver, uh, if that has a little bit of an effect and they're on the road, um, it is an island game for Boston. What do you think? Well, I do want to mention one thing, uh, first of all, with Derek White. If he does play, from what I saw, the last I saw, DraftKings still had him listed as playing for the Spurs. So oh. if, ah. if, if he plays tonight and you play him on DraftKings, you're going to get a zero unless they update that. So definitely want okay. to be careful about that. Um, but he's 6,300 on FanDuel. They have him as a Celtic, so they got that right at least. Um, but the Nuggets have allowed the third most fantasy points to point guards, so it would be a favorable matchup if he's able to play. And I think he'll want to make a strong first impression, you know, in front of the Boston crowd. So if he does play, I do like Derek White. Um, Jokic, it's a tough matchup for him. Boston has allowed the seventh fewest fantasy points to centers. And and then again, it's Jokic. So you never know what he could do. Uh, but, you know, I, I would lean more towards the sign of uh, fading him than playing him tonight, just because I think it's a, it's a tough matchup for him. And um, I do like Aaron Gordon a little bit. He's 5,600 on DraftKings. He scored 38 plus in three of his last four. And then Will Barton has also been playing well. He's 6,400. Not as high on him uh, as Gordon, but uh, Gordon and White would be it for me if White plays. Yeah, this uh, this game is my least favorite game on the slate. Uh, yeah. You know, the total's not that great. The defense is good. Pace is not good. Um, you know, the guys I'd be interested in are so priced so high. You know, the Joker mm. twelve four. I guess it doesn't matter what you price him; he can make his number. But that's a big number against a good yeah. defense. You know, and then on the a Boston side, Brown at eight seven, Tatum at nine six, and Williams all the way up to seven three now. That makes it tough too. So, right. you know, not really thrilled with much in this game. I will mm -hmm. say, Bones Highland at three eight. You know, he's starting to really be a serious guy in this rotation to the yeah. point where uh, he's playable. So 
but the problem is he's probably going to get Marcus Smart defense if that's the case. Right. So, right. yeah, not you know this could be a full pass game for me. I uh, just don't like the flow or feel of this game. It it doesn't seem like uh, you know it's going to be an up and down kind of game at all. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go to the big Mac Daddy 240 and a half total game. It's it's the eight o'clock game, and this one will be the, the one that a lot of people are stacking, I believe. Mm -hmm. The tight spread, Chicago minus four against Minnesota, 240 and a half total, 118.25 for Minnesota, which is usually means you're the favorite, but no, right. Chicago's 122.25. So what a hard game to get away from, from a DF, uh, DFS perspective. Uh, Minnesota comes in 29 and 26, Chicago 34 and 21. We do have a million <laughs> questionable designations yeah. on Minnesota. It's it's a joke. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being that it's an 8 o'clock game or 9 o'clock game, no, I'm sorry, 8 o'clock, we're not going to have a lot of news uh, probably on some of these guys, but listen to this, man. First of all, uh, you know, the, the, you've got the McKinley Wright dude that nobody really cares about. He's probable, but this is the list of questionable, Josh. Beverly, Edwards, Akogi, Prince, Reed, and D'Angelo Russell. Mm. So what the heck are you supposed to do with that? Yeah, that's that makes it tough for sure. I mean, it's almost impossible because mm – -hmm. They do have great replacements at the guards. You have, you know, McLaughlin and, uh, you know, Noel and all these guys, but right. they could be, you know, zeros for you. So I guess there's two strategies is you can roster some of them and then be ready and have a plan to switch to the Chicago, Orlando, or Utah guys if they're ruled out. That's mm -hmm. that's the only option. Or you can just say, screw it. I, I don't want to take a chance on some of yeah. these guys, but – I mean, how do you not take into consideration how high of a total this is and what a perfect situation uh, right. this aligns to be? Uh, for Chicago, by the way, Dasunmu is questionable. Vuk is probable. Guys mm -hmm. that are out, Ball, Caruso, Jones, and Williams. So very. Uh, this, this is the pivotal game of the day, if you ask me. Uh, you've got uh, Chicago on the first night of a back-to-back. -back. It's an island game for Minnesota. Minnesota's the second fastest-paced team in the league, and they're almost about to go into first. Mm -hmm. And then Chicago's up to 12th. So you got teams that are going to get up and down. Uh, for two teams that have been winning, though, their defense is uh, just average to below average. 15th right. for Minnesota, 20th for Chicago. So, wow, man, this – this is an interesting game. I don't know how much advice we could give here Friday morning until we have some of this information, but yeah. what are your initial thoughts here? I guess, you know, obviously this is going to have to be updated as we mm -hmm. go today. Yeah. It's hard to say at this point um, for me, you know, I, I do like DeMar DeRozan at, at 9,700. It's a bit of a price to pay obviously, but Minnesota has allowed the fifth most fantasy points to um, shooting guards and small forwards, which is kind of like what I consider DeRozan more than a power forward, which is what I think DraftKings has him listed as. He's not really a power forward to me, um, no. but he's averaged about 49 against, you know, um, against uh, Minnesota in the last two games against them. So, you know, right around 5X is what you're probably going to be looking at for DeRozan. So decent play there for a pay-up guy. Um Zach Levine is 8,000 on FanDuel. I like that price. He's 9,200 on DraftKings. Don't like that as much. He had, he had 51 um, against them last time, but that was April of last year, so he hasn't faced them this year. But, um, you know, they've allowed the fifth most, as I said, fantasy points to shooting guards, and it is a revenge game for him. So, you know, I think that, that he's definitely in play for me. And I do like a little bit of the value on Minnesota. Um, Vanderbilt is 5,300. Chicago's allowed the third most fantasy points of power forwards. And then McDaniels is 3,800. And he played 33 minutes against um, Sacramento on Wednesday. So if he gets that kind of minutes, you know, that, that value is going to be there at 3,800. Yeah, that that's a good call. I mean, I, you know, I won't spend too much time here because it's all going to depend on the news. And mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I think Russell and uh, 
Edwards are, are great plays if they play. You know, right. if Beverly's in at 5-1, you can consider him. But if a combination of those guys are out, then McLaughlin at 3-3, Noel uh, at 3-3, you could talk about those guys. Mm-hmm. Also, if the, if any of those guys are out, they've been playing uh, McDaniels and Vanderbilt together right. in those situations, uh, which brings both of, both of them in play because McDaniels is only 3-8, Vanderbilt's only 5-3. Mm-hmm. So you can get all kinds of, of value there. Uh, and I think Cat's in play too. I mean, this yeah. game is going to score – if you know, if some of those key guys are out for Minnesota, even one or two of them, it just pumps up the usage for Cat. And you know, sub 10K, nine eights, mm-hmm. fair. I think that's he's priced correctly. I think uh, you know, Vuk's not exactly a stellar defender, okay. so I think Cat's super playable. So I expect to come out of here with a couple of T wolves, but a lot of it's going to depend on you know who's in and who's out. Mm-hmm. I will roster a few of them, and I'll have some you know, comp salary wise guys to match up in, you know, from Chicago, Orlando and Utah, if I do need to swap, but I'm not going to say, you know, like some people, especially on Fridays, I know this happens, not the the sharks, but a lot of people will just set a lineup. You know, they may glance it from time to time, but they're not going to want the headache of having to rebuild the whole lineup. If all these guys are in or out from Minnesota. So I think you're going to have more people, fading Minnesota a little bit or not Mm -hmm. having a good plan for swap. And truthfully, I think that's the key to this slate is, you know, maximizing who's in and out for Minnesota and being able to swap and not, you know, leave $2,000 on the on the table. So that's key. And then on the Chicago side, I also need to know on Desunmu, I think that's important because, you know, that it changes the, the look for Kobe White. He's at 5-4. If Desunmu plays without restrictions at 5-6, mm-hmm. he's playable. I do like the Zach Levine call uh, at 9-2. Um, you know, Javante Green is has been decent at his cheap price of 4-6. And yeah. then, of course, you know, you have to mention DeRozan. I mean, I, I won't go up and pay both for DeRozan and Levine or Vuk. Just one of the three, I think, is a, a really good play. Maybe Vuk is a good play if you want to go Cat and Vuk and be done with it because they're both going to play. And mm-hmm. Vuk's been killing it. He's 9-5 on DraftKings. But, uh, you know, I have not been playing him because I'm afraid of the usage with the other players. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I could be talked into Vuk today. I haven't. I don't know if I've played him, you know, in a month. Yeah. But uh, if between the three, it's so hard because, again – little revenge game for Levine. He plays well against his old team. DeRozan's mm-hmm. been just like one of the five best know. players in the league. Yeah. And and then Vuk's been hammering it. So it's not an easy game. Uh, you know, you can make some wrong choices here. It's not like, mm-hmm. you know, you got a 240 and a half game and these guys are just auto plug them in. There's tons of, you know, options here. And you can right. hit the jackpot or, you know, hit the, the skids because – uh, you know, selection here is going to be huge and uh, getting that news is going to be important as well. Yeah, I think so too. All right, Chief, only one nine o'clock game. This will wrap up the seven game slate. It is the Orlando Magic at the Utah Jazz. Utah is favored by a big fat 13 and a half, mm-hmm. 222 and a half total, 104 and a half implied for Orlando. And then you've got a nice, healthy, uh, 118 for the Utah Jazz. Orlando comes in 30 games under 500 wow. at 13 and 43. That hurts. Mm-hmm. Jazz 34 and 21. Uh, Suggs questionable for Orlando, and he's his usage has gone up lately. So that if he sits, that opens up uh, for some other people. Fultz, Hampton, Isaac, Wagner. Uh, that's Mo Wagner out. Franz Wagner in. Um, for Utah, Gobert might return. He's questionable here, mm-hmm. as is Rudy Gay. So I, I don't know why they'd want to bring Gay, uh, or I'm sorry, Gobert, Gobert back man. here against this crappy team, yeah. but maybe just to play him short minutes and start getting his legs about him. But I don't think either way uh, that he's playable at all. Mm-hmm. Orlando's on the first night of a back-to-back. 
Um, you know, partial, maybe they play, sit Suggs this game for that reason. Um, it's an island game for Utah. Pace, solid here, Orlando, 8, Utah, 14. Uh, defense for Orlando, not good, 23. Utah is remains in the top 10 at ninth. Mm-hmm. So this game's scary. It could blow out. Yeah. It could be not a, a good situation. Or if somehow – Orlando can scrap in there. Uh, you know, it might be a diamond in the rough here for the late game. What are, what are you thinking? Yeah, this this could be a perfect scenario for what we like to talk about, how we don't want to just throw somebody in there for that last game, you know, just for the sake of it. I think this is a game that's very high on my fade potentials. Um, Cole Anthony at 7,200 on DraftKings is the only play that I'm really looking at for Orlando. Um, if they're going to stay close in this game, he's going to be a big part of it. So that's why I would consider him. Uh, he's been playing pretty well. He's had 36 plus DraftKings points in four of his last five. He had 50.8 against Portland on Tuesday. Uh, but that was Portland. <laughs> that was Portland. Utah is, is a much better team, obviously. I mean, they just blew out the Warriors. So um, if they can blow them out, that's really scary for what they could do to Orlando. So. I, I definitely am going to be cautious of this game. Um, if if Gobert sits, then you could look at either Azubuki or Whiteside. Uh, Orlando's allowed the 10th most fantasy points to centers. I would probably lean with Azubuki for the value and the blowout potential here. Um, but that's about it for me. Not a lot in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough call. I, I think if Suggs sits, I, I like Cole Anthony even better because yeah. he's going to get up more shots. So I, I do need that news there. But this also may be the game that if some of those Minnesota guys get, you know, knocked out and don't mm-hmm. play, uh, that I'm counting in there, I'm going to have to probably swap to a few of these guys. So I'm looking at salaries, seeing what matches up and what works. And I, you know, I think I have some decent options here with Anthony at 7-2. Um, Wendell Carter at 6'8". Those would be the two guys uh, from the Orlando side that I have interest uh, in. And the Utah side, you know, Donovan Mitchell's been phenomenal. Right. But at 8'8", eight, eight, in a game like this, where I'm not sure they're going to need him that much, mm-hmm. um, it's hard to pull the trigger. It is an island game, though, so he is tempting. Um, you know, if Gobert sits... I agree with you. Azubuki is is definitely a value center, pay down guy that you can feel pretty good about. But he's still splitting time with Whiteside, regardless. Right. right. Um, you know, if Gobert's back for minimum, then uh, minimum minutes. I, I really don't want to even mess with any of the three of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the other other guy is Bogdanovich at six two. He has a tendency to, you know. Uh, knock down some shots against lesser defensive teams like this that don't defend the three well. So at least he's an option if I do have to make some of these uh, moves. So really not a ton of interest in this game, but I'm not completely going to avoid it. Uh, You know, maybe just exposure for a one-off if the Minnesota guys are in. If not, you know, I'll have a couple guys uh, from this game. I don't think it's the worst game on the slate. Mm-hmm. but certainly not a game that's stackable just based on really the blowout situation, you yeah. know? Yeah, definitely. All right, my man, it is prize picks Friday. Our first one ever mm-hmm. pretty exciting there. Again, I want to thank Jack Cooper for jumping on at the beginning of the podcast to announce uh, the relationship and partnership now with prize picks and DFS coach talk. Uh, so we are going to have several of our, podcast uh, sponsored by the wonderful folks at Prize Picks, And on Fridays, Josh and I are going to share uh, a couple of picks for you that we have locked and loaded. Unless there's changes in player news, we will update these picks and they will be posted up on Twitter if we make a change, similar to what we do with the Two Brains lineup on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. So... Do you want? How about we give out our top two plays of the day on Prize Picks? Okay, uh, I do want to add real quick that with Prize Picks, you'll probably have to wait until usually after at least 10 a.m. Eastern, if not later, for them to put up a lot of these plays. And I okay. just looked at the board, and there's quite a few that still aren't up. 
games and stuff that don't have any players for them. Right. Some of these categories. So um, some of my top plays potentially are probably not on the board yet. So we're just going to have to go off of what we got right now. All right. And if you want to give, I mean, obviously we, we can't make those plays our picks of the day until we see what the number is, but mm -hmm. you certainly can mention the guys you're considering uh, that will show up later. Cause what they do is they'll put, you know, the guys up when they get confirmation and, and feel comfortable with lineups that are, you know, where guys are going to be. But uh, you know, if, if there's news, they'll take it down and put them back up. So you just have to, you know, catch it right, stay awake. You know, it's, you can also jump on some stuff quickly uh, if there are things that change throughout the day. So um, why don't you give us a couple just thoughts of the guys you were high on, uh, but you have to confirm with what their numbers are going to be. Um, right now, just looking at the board, I'm looking at um, Trey Young. His assist prop is at 10. He's gone okay. over that four of his last five games. Um, Clint Capella has a points, rebounds, and assist prop at 19 and a half. I think he can get over that in this matchup for sure. Okay. Uh, those would be those would be my two favorite right now from what I've seen. But a lot of these, like I said, they just went up um, on their board. So they, they updated right at 9 a.m. 9 Central, 10 a.m. Eastern a lot of times. Right. Yeah. And, and then they still have another update that's coming later in the day. So I, I still don't have everything that I need here. Uh, to make my my top plays. But uh, based on what's on the board right now, those would be my top two, would be Young and Capella. Young assist and Capella points, rebounds, and assist. Very good. I'm going to go right for the, the big dough right off the bat. Uh, points, rebounds, and assists, 40.5 for DeJounte Murray. I'm going to take the over there. I think he has just, you know, one of those big games uh, mm. with stats all over the place. So, uh I'm going to go over on Murray is going to be my first pick. And then this one's not going to be very popular, but I'm going to go with the Joker 46 total points, rebounds, and assists. I'm going to go under. I just mm. don't like the game set. It's not a knock against the Joker. It's just I think that number becomes a little bit tough to get to. I mean, if he has 44 combination yeah. points, rebounds, and assists, that's pretty damn good, but mm -hmm. he's still under. So, right. you know, that's uh, – so I'm going two big names. You know, a lot of times you can find the, you know, the obscure names to go with. But I'm, you know, first first day of the, doing this uh, on our pod, I'm going for the big boys. DeJounte Murray, total points, rebounds, assists over 40 and a half. Nikola Jokic, Jokic I can't, can't say I'm <laughs> so used to saying the Joker. Yeah, um, Joker, yeah, 46 total points, rebounds, and assists under. Under, yeah. 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 No, I do like that. And uh, obviously I gave two guys from the Hawks, so you have to have somebody from a different team. So you could take, you know, any combination of the four guys that Coach and I recommended to, to make your plays today um, is what I, how, how I would recommend doing it, unless we find something we like more, and that will be posted in the Discord. Exactly. And also remember, like, if you want to take the same guy, like if you're taking LaMelo Ball <clears throat> over points, rebounds, and assists, you can't take LaMelo Ball over three-pointers made. You, you can't mm -hmm. take a uh, pick when you're picking him. So right. just something I wanted to point out for those that are new. And, again, if you want to try out prize picks, uh, the stuff they have for the Super Bowl this weekend is unbelievable. It is just mm -hmm. amazing. And uh, – Prize picks is in 36 states, by the way. Jack had mentioned that yesterday. Mm -hmm. So most of the states, you know, you're you're going to be able to get this. There are some key states like Ohio that doesn't have it yet. Mm -hmm. So, but for the states that do, uh, and you want to give it a try, they uh, with the promo code Coach Talk, all one word, no space, they will give you a hundred percent match on your first deposit uh, up to a hundred bucks. Yeah. And I will add real quick, if you do want to play a multiple uh, number of props by the same player, you can do it in a different line. So you could make a different line with LaMelo Ball uh, over in three-pointers made or however the case may be. Exactly. All right, my man, that is it. That is the whole deal. Our wonderful, uh, uh, nice initiation here with uh, prize mm -hmm. picks. Excited to be doing that with you every Friday. 
Yeah. And then we'll be posting all kinds of stuff, content, information. Uh, we'll be uh, pinning our the, our tweet and all that information on YouTube as well uh, regarding prize picks and how to join and uh, the promo code, etc. So outstanding, bud. Anything else as we go into this Friday slate? No, just uh, looking forward to this this partnership that we've started with Prize Picks. Like you said, I've been on Prize Picks for a while now, and really excited for our members to to share in the winnings that that I've you know taken a part of and you've taken a part of. And um, you know, we got the Super Bowl this weekend, so it's going to be a big weekend for us. Obviously, looking forward to that, and um, just just enjoying this weekend. It'll be a lot of fun. It is going to be a great one. Well, I appreciate it, and. Uh... You know, and again, thanks out there to Jack Cooper with Prize Picks again for joining us. Uh, for Josh Crash Davis, the whole DFS Coach Talk team, Crash and I will be back again tomorrow uh, with our two brains are better than one Fandle GPP build. And uh, we'll look forward to getting back with you then and crushing it in NBA DFS. <laughs>